you're looking to take your rope flow practice a little further or you want a little bit of variety today in this video i'm going to share four or five actually of my favorite tools that i feel very much complement rope flow and some of those aims that you might have building rotational capacity getting into that flow state and just having fun messing about Hi, I'm Luke. Welcome to Hero Movement. If you're new to the channel, here we share all things physical movement, well-being and adventure. Our cheesy underlying philosophy centers on the idea of becoming the heroes of our own stories. Basically, we're looking to develop resilience and skills to navigate life's challenges, of which there are plenty, and help other people along the way. I'm on this journey with you, just learning as I go with the overarching goal of building physical and mental strength, endurance, and mobility. In doing that, we explore a whole load of different ideas related to a range of topics. Mobility training, building functional strength, philosophy, going on adventures, and more recently, we've been covering rope flow a lot. So today I just wanted to share some of the other tools that I use in my own training that I feel really complement rope flow. So they're tools that can help us build rotational power, endurance, coordination, and just athleticism, but with a slightly different stimulus and potentially some other benefits. And there's pros and cons to all. So I'd love to hear from you if you use any of these tools or if you want to learn more about any of them, then leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're getting on. It's always nice to hear from people shouting into the void. <laughs> and don't forget to stick around to the end. I'll show you my new favorite tool that I've been using, um, which is going somewhat well, but you'll see. So first up, a slight variation to traditional rope flow is using heavier ropes or ropes with knots on the end to add a little kind of weight to it. Gotta be somewhat careful with this. Make sure there's no one around you and be mindful of your head because even a small knot on the end of a rope can be a devastating weapon. You can still work on a lot of these rotational patterns, but there's a little bit more behind it. You can really feel that force and generate more force when you've got more weight on the end of the rope. And you can also experiment with changing the length. So you can do this with an existing flow rope like I'm showing here, but I've also made this uh, monstrosity I don't know what it's called. It's basically a monkey fist knot on the end of a heavy rope, and it is a force of nature. Again, you've got to be really careful with it, but it can be a useful tool. I've mentioned before, I used this heavy rope to learn some of the mace bell movements that I was struggling with with the mace. Still can be dangerous, but not as dangerous as using a mace and getting cracked on the head. Next, we have clubs. So I have these adjustable clubs by, I think they're called Pavel, Pavel Handle by Heroic Sport, no affiliation. So they're adjustable, they're extremely portable, like the rope, and you can still work on some of those uh, rotational patterns. This is a smaller arc than the rope, you can use them indoors as well, which is handy if it's hammering down like it is now, just as I was filming outside, which is great. So these are akin to Indian clubs, which are typically lighter, they're like one to two, maybe three kilos. One of the best tools I've ever used for developing strength and mobility through my wrists and my elbows and shoulders. The best my shoulders have felt for a long time, and that's been back at jujitsu as well, and again yanked on. So you can kind of get into the flow with the clubs, you can perform different footwork and rotational patterns, um, and you can just practice trying to land a plane. Uh, it's, yeah, just good fun. I also have a heavier club, I think it's five or six kilos, and that's great for, as well, working on some of those rotational patterns, but also even just holding it in the ready position is a challenge for core stability. So with the rope, we we're typically working more on our core coiling and rotation, with the clubs and the heavier clubs and the heavier maces, which we'll talk about now, you have an element of that, but you also have to stabilize. So you go from coiling to then stabilizing to keep that club or mace steady. So I think there's some benefit to that as well, being able to both accelerate, generate sort of motion, but also to be able to resist it and stop and change direction. Then we have mace bells. So I have a couple, I've made some varying degrees 
of success. And the smaller one I've got is about six and a half kilos, and then the bigger one is, I think, around 12. So mace is obviously got a longer handle than a club, but it, you work on similar movement patterns. The main ones being the 360 or the 10 to two, they're the main two. You can also work on various sort of chopping and digging rotational patterns. So I feel I have a lot of transfer over to striking, throwing, hitting a ball. It also feels quite cool, just swinging a mace around. You kind of feel a bit like a warrior, just a child, really. You can also take your small plate, so 1.25, and a collar and chuck it on to the mace to add a little bit of extra weight too, which is nice. Yeah, with the mace, you can work on a lot of those rotational patterns. You get a bit more through the shoulders and excellent for building grip strength. Same goes for the heavy club as well. You spend five, 10 minutes swinging a mace or a club around, you get a massive pump through your forearms. And it's one of my favorite ways to build grip strength without really thinking about building grip strength. You know, you're just having fun swinging a weapon around. And we know that stronger grip is correlated with longevity and is useful in pretty much every sport and activity. So yeah, and it's fun getting the heavy mace and doing sort of lower reps and short sets, but also going with a lighter mace and going with the flow a bit more like you would with rope flow. Sticks, I love sticks. I like walking sticks, little sticks, big sticks, trees. That's a video for another day. <clears throat> so recently I've gone back to using a staff a lot. I like uh, Fan Dabby Dozy, he's a good channel. Uh, thank you to Joseph uh, in the comments for recommending him to me. It's rekindled, no pun intended, my love of sticks. I've got lots of different ones, but I mainly use this old curtain pole from my own dad's. It's quite heavy. You can work on that infinity pattern that we see with the underhand and overhand figure of eight movements with rope flow. I also have a bow staff from my Tang Sudo days, which I can spin a little bit faster. You've got to be careful not to conk yourself on the head. It happens to me a lot, which you can probably tell. It's another great way to develop rotational power, coordination, and just get into that flow state as well. I think I'll do another video on sticks at some point. I think it needs to be done. Lastly, one of my new favorite tools is something called a sand flail. So there's a company in Scotland that makes these durable and uh, fun to use. I'd say it's a combination of a rope and a club. So you have basically a sandbag that's tied with a handle. I put some old Muay Thai hand wraps on mine just to make it look a bit cooler. So you can perform those same rotational patterns, figure of eights and the kind of overhead 360 movement. And the sand shifts around. So you get this slightly different dynamic. It's kind of pulling you a bit more than it would if it was just that weight and didn't have the shifting inside it. One of the main reasons I've really been enjoying it was because I could launch the sand flail. Basically, I was gonna demonstrate a lot of different movements I've been doing, throwing the sand flail, flail. well, it's gonna, yeah, throwing it, slamming it, because it's made of sand, you know, it's not a metal mace. So I thought I can launch it a bit more, which is fun. I think it's also a useful skill, like throwing stuff, actually not just generating power like you would with a kettlebell swing, but generating it and launching that object. It's good for us. Turns out my sand flail wasn't quite as durable as I thought it was. And uh, yeah, just covered in sand, mate. The principle still stands. I will rebuild and I would have refilmed if I had the time, but I'm going away for a bit. I will see if I can overlay some clips of people using a sand flail and you can check out the company. I'll link them down below. No affiliation again, although I would collaborate with them if they're open to it. So. In summary, none of those tools are better than others. I enjoy all of them. We can all learn something from them. They can all teach us something slightly different. There are underlying principles, generating rotation, rotational power through the core, but also then being able to stabilize. And that yin and yang, the contraction, expansion, flow and resist. Hope this was useful. If you enjoyed it or you have any questions or you want to share, the tools that you use in your training, then let me know down in the comments below. Got a video coming up soon on how I approach learning a new skill and it kind of applies to rope flow, also applies to these tools and lots of other skills that I've tried to learn in life, like music and language and other stuff. I then have a couple of other 
projects coming up that I'm excited to share. I've been working on for quite a while. They're coming together, nearly ready. And yes, watch this space. Subscribe to the email list or the channel. Um, turn on updates if you'll need it from me when something new is out. Hope this was somewhat helpful or interesting. Uh, yeah, give me a shout if you've got any questions. Take care, have a healthy, heroic week, day, hour. See you next time. Thank you. Goodbye.